here is a sample spreadsheet animation. This is mostly the same code from my previous video where I had, uh, where I was rendering a decal. It's mostly the same code. The only difference is that instead of having one sprite, I'm having multiple sprites in uh, a single PNG file. The concept itself is very simple. If I look at the code, the only difference is that instead of using the draw decal function, we have draw partial decal function. And if I look at the parameter, it's mostly the same except we have source position and source size. So what does source position mean? If we look at the PNG file, it means where do you want to start your render? For example, if you want to render this part at a file, you could have a, a source position here. And then based on source size, you decide exactly which portion you want to render. And of course, you can pick wherever you want on the sheet. You pick your source position, and then you pick your source size. The other parameter, size, refers to how big the render is going to be. So for example, if I decide to have this 800, something bigger, for example, on the x-axis. OK, now we have a wider render. The math itself is quite simple. I have a script called sprite animation. And here is the math that decide exactly which portion of the file that you want to render. Now, let me explain exactly how you get the coordinates. So every one of these sprites is divided into equal tiles. So every one of them is something like 800 by 200, I think. I forgot the exact number, but approximately. And we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 tiles on the first line. And it just goes on. We have this index number would be 6. Uh, this would be 11. This would be 17. I'm just adding 6. This would be 23. This would be 24. 25. This would be 12. 18. So every one of these tiles would have an index. For example, let's say I want to render index number 7 here. I want to first get the source position, more specifically x. And in order to do that, uh, the math is simple. I have the index number 7, and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 items uh, in the horizontal row. So we do uh, 7 divided by 6, which means you get 1, and the remainder is 1. And this remainder is the important part, because if you look at horizontally, this part would be 1 in terms of the coordinates, 0, 1. And in order to get the source position here, horizontally, all we got to do is 800 multiplied by 1, which is the coordinate number. For something like index number 6, for example, you do a 6 divided by 6, and the answer is 1, the re remainder is 0. So the coordinate number horizontally for index number 6 is 0. For index number 7, remainder is 1. For index number 8, remainder is 2. Next, rem remainder is 3, remainder is 4, remainder is 5. So in order to get the x position, you would do 800 multiplied by 2 here. And this spot would be 800 multiplied by 3, and so on. Once you understand this, getting the y position is pretty straightforward. Let's say we're getting uh, the y position for index number, number 7. Instead of getting the remainder, we get this part of the equation. I forgot what this is called, but the exact answer for 7 divided by 6 is 1 point something. The exact answer for 8 divided by 6 is also 1 point something. Do you see a pattern here? The, the, the answer for 7, 8, 9 divided by 6 would be 1 point something. The answer for 10 divided by 6 would be 1 point something. The answer for 11 divided by 6 would be 1 point something. Only when you get to the next line, which is 12, if you do a 12 divided by 6, that's when you get 2. And then if you do a 13 divided by 6, you get 2 point something. If you divide by 14 by 6, you still get 2 point something, and so on. So getting the y position is easy. For every tile on this line, you would have the y-coordinate of 1. 
every tile on this line would have the y coordinate of 2. So if you're getting a y position for index number 7, you would do uh, 1 multiplied by 200, which is the, the individual tile size. If you're getting the y position for index number 13, you would do 2 multiplied by 200. So now you know how to get the starting position, and you also know that the tile size is exactly the same. You can get any tile that you want on the sheet. This is the conversion into code. Don't be confused by the syntax. Understand the concept. Let me introduce one more function. Instead of using the draw partial decal function, we could have draw partial warp decal. Instead of simply deciding the size of the render, you can decide every four corners of the rectangle, the, the four vertices. So in this case, if I press F5, you can see that I've reversed the render. All I've done is set up the coordinates in a way that this is point, point 0.0, point 0.1, point 0.2, and point 0.3. And I can also go the other way. I'm going to go back to the code. And instead of this part, I'm going to use this part, press F5. Okay, in this case, the points would be, this would be point 0, point 0.1, point 0.2, and point 0.3. You can set this up however you want to. I would also recommend that you watch the original video from One Lone Coder, and you'll see many different ways where you can use the decals. You'll see that draw decal versus draw partial decal versus draw partial warp decal, they're not all that different. And once you understand this, you now have your basic building blocks for your own 2D game. And in the following videos of this playlist, I'm going to come up with my own examples. I'm only going to use the stuff that I talked about, so hopefully that will give you some idea on what you can do with C++ and the OLC Pixel Game Engine. And I want you to come up with your own game, go through lots and lots of trial and error. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, you can reach me on my Discord server. I have all the links below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.